Laser Dave here at Laguna Tools. Today we specifically want to go over carbon cut conditions using oxygen. I will give you all the tricks and tips you need to get a perfect cut condition. One of the factors in cutting carbon steel is our gas pressure. Uh, here we have a single stage regulator um, set at 50 PSI. We just need to maintain a constant line pressure of 50 PSI. Our oxygen line runs to this proportional valve. Uh, the proportional valve is programmable in our cut condition. So rule of thumb is carbon steel oxygen double nozzle. Visually seeing, this is chrome plated, it's a double nozzle. There's a nozzle inside of a nozzle. The reason for this is oxygen is an accelerant. It burns hotter, burns faster, and so we need to make sure in line with our line pressure, our proportional valve, and our nozzle that we're getting that oxygen and getting a good cut. The gas pressure is the most crucial element when cutting carbon steel. So we have three known cut conditions here on carbon steel. We're gonna cut a couple of them. If you come back later on today, tomorrow, next week, pull in that known cut condition and it's not cutting correctly, trust the cut condition and it might be some other variable. It might be your nozzle. It might be a wrong cut condition that's in there. Don't just assume and start changing that cut condition. So here we're gonna cut some eighth inch mild steel. So one thing that I do wanna add is your edge quality, your cut is only gonna be as good as your pierce. So you wanna make sure you have a good pierce when you're cutting mild steel. Okay, the first one we're gonna start off with is this eighth inch mild steel. Let's do it. Hey, so looking at these parts, you know, coming off there, they look really good. Looking at the edge quality, uh, very nice, uh, uniform, flamed edge. Uh, we're cutting this at 135 inches a minute with about three PSI of oxygen, okay? So there's a correlation between speed and gas pressure. It's not a direct correlation. I wish I could say, hey, up at 50% or not. If you get a lot of dross on the backside of the part, that means you probably don't have enough gas pressure. If you're getting a lot of striations in the part, that means you have too much gas pressure. We're talking about carbon steel, double nozzle and oxygen. All right, now we're gonna move on to the quarter plate, mild steel. this piece here looks very nice nice flamed edge no secondary processing needed to be done with that one um, we were cutting it at 90 inches a minute at three and a half psi um, it, it looks very nice uniform um, no secondary processing involved uh, we'll be able to use that part um, I want to show you an example of a part that has too much gas associated with it. So we have a lot of dross on the backside. We have all these striations into the part. 
this was the same speed, same focal, same everything. It's just the gas pressure. So if you see this right here, you know it's contributed 100% to the gas pressure. We showed you, it started off with the eighth inch uh, hot roll steel. Uh, we went to the quarter hot roll steel. The thicker you go, the more you're going to see that the gas pressure is crucial in good, getting a good cut quality. Um, we showed you one where it, too much gas pressure, showed the striations in the parts, showed dross on the back of the part. So here we're going to go to 3 8 hot roll steel. Um, it has its own cut condition. We just implemented that. We're going to cut it and show you. Here's a little trick that I do. You'll constantly see me touching the nozzle. Okay, the nozzle should be radiant warm. Even if I cut a whole sheet of 3 8 plate, the nozzle should never be hot. There's only two reasons why the nozzle would be hot. One, the beam is, is out of alignment, or two, you're cutting highly reflective material. This is not highly reflective material, so at any time, we should be able to touch that nozzle. Now that we're done with the mild steel and the oxygen, let's move this stuff out of the way, get some stainless and aluminum in here. Here we have a six pack of nitrogen. Uh, we have a single stage regulator. We need the regulator to be able to go up to 300 PSI, but I have it set to 150 PSI. We want to cut as fast as we can with a minimal amount of gas. Gas consumption on the laser is the biggest conundrum on the planet. So listen, start off with it low, and good edge quality cut you need and turn it up as you need to. The rule of thumb is single nozzle and nitrogen, okay? I can look and see that I have the double nozzle in there, so I'm gonna go ahead and swap that out with the single nozzle right here for nitrogen and stainless steel. So we have our material up here. We have our single nozzle in there for nitrogen and stainless steel. This particular cut condition we do not have, so we're gonna make it from scratch. Um, we're going to put our speed in there to what we think it can cut at. We're going to make sure it's on nitrogen. We're going to put our focal. So rule of thumb on this is zero to a negative number is going to be stainless steel or aluminum using nitrogen. A zero to a positive number is going to be carbon steel and double nozzle and oxygen. So really you can kind of base that upon what material thickness you're using. Since we don't know, I just put this number in there and we're gonna give it a shot and see what happens. So the first thing I'm gonna look for is make sure that the beam's not dancing on top of the material. Wanna make sure we're cutting it as fast as we can. We'll get a cut, we'll look at it, see what changes we need to make. All right, so we cut through the part. We looked at it. There's a minimal amount of slag or dross on the other side. Cut condition doesn't look too bad, but we have this, we are gonna make some changes. Our speed looked good. Our gas pressure is at 150 PSI, so that's good. It's not keeping us from getting a, a decent part, but we wanna make this a perfect cut condition. I can see this is going to be the fastest it can get up to when doing any of this. On the other stuff, there's some dross, there's a couple little slag marks, this and that. So what that's telling me is that when it's slowing down to do this stuff, that's where it's having a problem. So what we want to do is make sure we can cut this as fast as we can with a minimal amount of gas and get a perfectly good part. So I'm going to make some changes here. We want to figure out what change made this better if we're in the right direction. So right now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and change my focal a little bit to see if I get a better result. I'm gonna hit okay, and I'm gonna cut the part again.
All right, yep, it looks like the changes that we made took care of the, the problems that we had on the first part. It was just changing the focal a little bit. So this one, we are gonna save this cut condition. We came up with a cut condition from scratch for 100 stainless steel. If I had other stainless steel, I could copy that and either slow it down, speed it up, change the focal a little bit, leave your gas pressure where it is at 150 PSI until you need it to be more than that. There's no sense in wasting gas if you don't need to. Uh, we cut this one at 300 inches a minute. We're using 150 PSI. Really, really good cut condition. Now that you saw us come up with a cut condition for stainless steel, we're gonna move along and put in some aluminum. Come check it out. We're going to use the same cut condition that we did on the stainless steel. Has similar qualities and features. We should be pretty close. Okay. Right there, we can see that the, it was dancing up on top of the material. So that's gonna be speed or focal. So looking at this, I think I want to change the speed. And right now I'm at 300 inches a minute. This is what we were cutting the stainless steel at. Yes, it's a little bit thicker aluminum. Um, so instead of changing a bunch of stuff all at the same time, I'm gonna just change this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop it down to 200. So, looking at this, it wasn't through, wasn't through, wasn't through, then it went through. So what that's telling me, at the speed that it's going here, it's not through, but when it slows down to make the transition here, it is going slow enough. So I think our speed is still a factor at this point. So with what was said on that part that we looked at, said the speed was a little bit uh, still too high. So we dropped it down to about 150 inches a minute. That's all we changed, and now we'll give it another shot. So as you can see in here, when we slowed it down, we're not bouncing up on top. We cut all the way through the part. It looks good. There's still some more changes that we'll wanna to make to that before we consider that our perfect cut condition. So with that, I think our speed was good. It looked good. Uh, we left the nitrogen gas at 150 PSI. Um, I just dropped the focal a little bit, try to get that, uh, the dross on the bottom side of the part gone. All right, let's see what this does. So this was good that it happened, okay? Because what this is telling us is that it's not our speed that's giving us a problem here, it's our focal. We went all the way past it, so our focal's either down too low or too high. So we'll make a, adjustments to, to clean that up. Obviously, we went past our negative focal point, so we wanna bring it back down to where we're at. Speed was not a factor in that, it was 100% focal. So we brought it back down to 045, we'll get it fine-tuned. We made a few other adjustments that we will go over here in a minute. Let's see what this one does. An acceptable part, I figure, is something that rolls off. No secondary process would need it to be done. Just flakes right off. So the changes that we made off camera were we dropped the speed down to 130 inches a minute for this part, and we changed our focal to a negative 0.125. That's what we came up with, with gas pressure at where it was to make a good, clean cut condition. Uh, it rolls off, it's it's perfectly good part. Uh, hopefully this helps you out. Uh, if you have any questions on any of our fiber laser line, give us a call or look us up online at lagunatools.com. Thank you.